starting off today's video from the snack machine area here and you may notice right back there that's what we're talking about today that is Romeo and Juliet here among the snack machines so let's step outside into the rain here I'll give you a quick look around of this plaza that we've got back here kind of in the neighborhood where Romeo and Juliet used to really live in this Italian city of Verona. So the first stop today is going to hopefully be the old house where Romeo lived, the real Romeo, and uh, then we will try to visit the house where Juliet lived as well. So this is going to be a very Rick Steves kind of topic today. You might know him from public TV in the US and he goes to all of these old world cities in Europe. Looks at all this stuff, old stuff. <laughs> and I've always kind of liked the idea of watching his shows, but for some reason when I try, it always gets so overly I don't know, is it romantic or something? And he's showing you these ceilings of all these paintings and you're sitting there kind of wondering, what's the significance of all of this, Mr. Rick? <laughs> so we'll try not to get too Rick Stevesy today and uh, stick more to the real world in the rain, what's going on, right? Leave the backpack at home and get the rain jacket out. So here is, kind of hard to see here, we're, we're in a narrow spot, but that right there, that's old Romeo's old house. He was a real guy, and uh, let's see if we can get up, maybe look at the plaque, but that's about all there is to see today. Back in there is where it all started, where we have this term now in English, maybe a lot of other languages too. Talk about somebody being a real Romeo. This is where that all started. And you can see on the wall, first of all, there's all kinds of uh, little hearts and everything people leave there. And then they do have a couple of plaques that kind of explain the whole thing. I don't want to point you up into the rain too much there. You're going to not be able to... Uh, <laughs> see anything through the lens of this camera. So it just says it's the Casa di Romeo and a uh, little bit of information but that's what we've got to see there. Now Juliet's place isn't far away I just have to actually find it. I was down here yesterday scoping things out just make sure I have uh, some idea where this place is at and we are going to try to get in there and get a look and I mentioned you know, this term being a real Romeo. I think, at least in America, that term has become sort of acquainted or, or associated with um, guys who are known to be sort of always talking with the ladies and always have lots of ladies that they're dating, etc. But you tell me, right? My impression of the real Romeo is a bit more of like an amateur who's uh, just getting started in his romantic life, you might say. <laughs> and so perhaps our image of what uh, Romeo was and what he really was might be a little bit different. Let me know your opinion on all of that if you happen to be uh, a buff of this kind of stuff because this isn't exactly my usual. <laughs> so it's a little far back and a little bit too... Uh, Rick Stevesy, perhaps for my usual interests, but uh, there's something about this idea that these people were real and they really lived in this neighborhood right here where you see that truck. <laughs> so I see Juliet's place right over here while we wait for them to open for the day. I thought I'd mention the actual significance of this topic to me, right? Because I always question the Rick Steves stuff. What is the significance of what he shows people? And this particular topic, I think, is very significant to recent times, and I'll speak for my culture alone, 
in the U.S., pandemic, technology, all of the political crap that goes on in my uh, culture, I think has led to a situation where young people especially are probably much less likely to have romantic relationships and kind of pursuing these social relationships that perhaps end up as some kind of romance, long-term relationship, right? And so this whole concept of a Romeo and Juliet, the fact that I can still come here to Verona and have the local girls kind of giggle at me when I'm holding the selfie stick like I'm doing right now in this goofy looking hood, <laughs> speaks of a much more healthy society than what you might find in the US, for example, where I think things are just much more isolated and people feel much more kind of lonely and perhaps don't know how to approach these kinds of relationships any longer. So I'm gonna let the fellow next to me get his picture and then we are gonna walk over there, see if we can actually get a peek at this famous balcony. So as things really unfolded, Juliet was on her balcony there. Romeo was down here in the garden, kind of hiding. And he heard Juliet talking about him. And he revealed himself and basically said, listen, Juliet up there, I'm in love, I want to get married. These two lovers came from rival families, the Montagues and the Capulets, as we call them in English. And so they were forbidden lovers who, despite it all, decided to run off to Vegas, get married by an Elvis impersonator. <laughs> I might have made up that last part, my version of this very interesting and I think significant and important real story here from Verona. So I'm gonna get out of the rain. I hope you enjoyed this quick little story and until our next adventure, goodbye.